Mr. Kendrick Lamar. So, <laughs> the Not Like Us video shoot happened uh, about a week ago. If you guys don't, uh, it had had been seeing that for the past uh, couple of days, and I want to give a shout out to Dave Messer because we're gonna go to the behind the scenes video shoot. It was a whole goddamn party there. I mean, it was a whole goddamn party there at the video shoot. This shit was kind of cool. They got going on, man. And the fact that he had cameras in the shades. Glasses. Yeah, he got camera in the shades. So let's look at all the nostalgia going on around here. Hey, Kendrick. I don't give a damn about the copyright. We here.
Big ass party out there, ain't it? That's what I love about this little video shoot. It was just one big ass party in LA. It's like if you wasn't out there, you wasn't nobody. He called out everybody out the conference. Same way he did to pop out. Everybody came out to this motherfucker here. It was like everywhere he went was shooting the video, it was just one big ass party. It was like. party along now. That fuck him up. Start trying to get the video picture real quick. Get the video. Hey. Oh shit. My blessings. Hey. My homie has a camera out already. He, he already has a camera out. Come on, do do picture. Oh, all right. I'm gonna get a picture real quick too. All right. All right. Damn. All right. Bites out. What's up? Once again, shout out to the homie David Messer. Make sure y'all go uh, like and subscribe his channel as well. Nice. We outside. Nice. These bikes are hard as hell, bro. These bikes. Oh, you should have seen the white one that they were on. Sometimes you gotta pop out and show niggas. Hey, hey. What you think about the Kendrick concert? What, what you, you think about? Right the, yeah. Oh, for real, for real. <laughs> What's love? You live in Compton? Pretty much had a parade out there. So he was shooting the video on the inside of that hey, structure Liz, there. So people program? couldn't necessarily get on the inside of that. I got the Meta Ray-Ban glasses. Until this part.
Oh, we lock in. It's great to see him bringing so many people together, yo. That's what this video shoot was all about. It was just great to see him bringing so many people together from the city of Compton, man. And, of course, there were other parts of the video shoot that um, everybody had seen the obvious uh, parts where he was uh, had the red uh, phantom out there in uh, the projects. So I didn't really need to show that one as much as people didn't get to see this particular uh, view here. That's the crazy thing. Yes, people are so tired of the trap rap and drill songs. People are so tired of the trap rap and drill songs. People are tired of the the killing. We're, we're tired of the, of hearing that. We're, we're tired of hearing that type of music. We want to get back to having some fun. At the end of the day, that's what it. That's what it came down to. And this record is so damn fun. Drake himself couldn't deny it. Drake himself couldn't deny it. My man was up there. <laughs> Certified pedophile. <laughs> I never would have thought I'd see the day. Drake is singing his own this record. Basking in the glory of his own diss. Notice he couldn't say that part. Baka got a weird case why is he around. He couldn't say that damn part. He didn't want to repeat that shit. Baka right there behind the stage. My man was up there singing and dancing to his own diss record. I I couldn't believe this. <laughs> I could I for one couldn't believe seeing that shit there. I I I tell you. What we've come to where the Drake stimulus package doesn't even hit no more. Like he just released the record with Camila Cabela. In fact, he has two records on there. He has the record with him <coughs> and Camila, which the record is all right. The record is all right. The Uptown Hot record is all right. But then you have the Ugly record, which is just him on the song. And when I hear that, when I hear he has his own record on the on there, I couldn't help but think about, you know, The blind item that we had came across. Remember the blind item we came across? In which it said, you know, the foreign born illiterate A minus B plus singer and horrible actress is out of money and is desperate to make a comeback in the music scene. She has an album coming out, and to get an A-list collaboration, she slept with two famous rappers, a woman beater and a wheelchair rapper who's into people too young for him. Well, we all knew who those two were. That was Playboy Cardi and Drake. So, when, hey Juju, what's going on? When I got... The word that Camila Cabello had a new record out with Drake. And that she had a record on his album with just him. I said, you know, it's funny how this blind item came out months ago. This blind item came out about six to seven months ago. So... For it to be ahead of its time like that and call this Camila Cabela record. You know. I'm just saying. But the moral of the story is, like I said, 
Drake ain't got the stimulus package no more. Remember the days of when Drake was on the record and it was just an instant hit? It's gone. It's gone. And that was why he wanted to put a cease and desist on the like that record. He ain't like that record. Because the season, the, the, the like that record is what caused all this shit. <laughs> so it put a stop on a lot of Drake records that were coming out. It put a stop on Wagwan Delilah. <laughs> it, it, it put a huge stop on Wagwan Delilah. It put a huge stop on the future with Nicki Minaj. Ibiza. Remember I played that record on the pod? I was excited as shit. I said, like, oh, we're going to have a nice little summer. Then like that happens. <laughs> so, needless to say, Kendrick Lamar has literally put a huge foot in the ass of the music industry. <laughs> because everything is pretty much on a standstill as far as uh, rap releases. <laughs> major rap releases because Drake was at the forefront of those major hip hop releases uh, coming to the charts and now you have a Not Like Us record coming out or should I say taking over everything but Not Like Us you haven't really heard them say oh Not Like Us is the number one record in, in the world number one record in the nation you haven't really heard them say that right it's because they can't say it <laughs> they don't want to say that shit because they didn't plan on Not Like Us coming out and being a number one record. So this wasn't an industry planted hip hop chart record. So they can't put out a bunch of uh, media posts hyping it up saying number one record in the country, Kendrick Lamar. They have to subtly say it's moving up the charts. <laughs> if they can't they can't necessarily say what is actually the damage that it's actually doing out here you look at that damn song it ain't past number five nowhere nowhere internationally okay they singing this shit in Japanese at this point this shit is they singing not like us in Korean okay this, this shit is everywhere everywhere you can't escape not like us. And when you have a record that the industry, like I said, did not plan on creating this massive, massive buzz the way it did. And to top it off, it's about calling someone a pedophile. I keep one. I keep having to reiterate that part. This Number one record is about calling someone a pedophile. And for the masses, or should I say majority of the men in the industry, do have some of them have that on their resume. And Kendrick Lamar spoke about it. As I said before on the last part, or two pods ago, I should say. Unfortunately, things do not go uphill when you are whistleblowing upon things like that. Now, one other thing that caught my attention here was uh, Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar, Triple X Tentacion's father. I, mean, I said this before, I thought that uh, Kendrick Lamar was riding out for Triple X. Triple X's father. Excuse me. Said, so what's up to Kendrick? So XXX Tentacion's father recently praised Kendrick Lamar for giving his son a platform. Hey, it's Asia Sky for Hip Hop DX, and check this out. So XXX Tentacion's short stint in the creative circuit left quite an impression on his peers, most notably Kendrick Lamar. When the late rapper released his debut album, 17, back in 2017, KDOT shared a link to it on social media and wrote, Listen to this album if you feel anything. Raw thoughts. Just minutes later, he revealed that he had already listened to the 11-track package five times. This unsurprisingly gave the rising star a major boost at the time, and X's father has now expressed his gratitude towards Kendrick. In a brief Instagram clip posted on Tuesday, June 25th. Special big up. Shout out goes to Kendrick Lamar. 
Yeah. Powerful king. Powerful. Powerful. Uh, my name is Dwayne Anfroy, father of rapper known as Triple X Tentacion. I just want to say, first of all, thank you for giving my son a platform when he was a unknown artist and his first single. He gave him a shout out when his album was released. You stepped up to the plate for him when a lot of people just stood by and stood back and Spotify had him under pressure and wasn't even attempting to play his songs. Really, King, I've always respected you for that. Always. California was my home. Still love Cali. I understand. Kendrick Lamar. Salute, salute, salute. Really out. Much, much respect, brother. Back in 2018, Spotify introduced the hate content and hateful conduct policy, and per the guidelines, XXXTentacion's music was removed from their editorial and algorithmic playlist since the rapper had been charged with aggravated battery of a pregnant woman, domestic battery by strangulation, false imprisonment, and witness tampering by an ex-girlfriend. The company went back on the move soon after as Kendrick Lamar's team reached out to CEO Daniel Ek and head of artist relations Troy Carter, threatening to remove his music from their platform. So what are your thoughts? on ex's father thanking kendrick lamar for what he did i commend kendrick's uh kendrick triple x's father for doing so because he recognized what kendrick lamar did for him uh back in the day as well as he understands that kendrick lamar is further riding for him now uh further news on drake um the ai company that was supposedly behind uh bbl drizzy had gotten sued recently. Ironically. And. I for one you know. I'm, I'm a little taken back by that. Just just for the simple fact that. Drizzy. You knew better. You knew better. You knew what you were doing. With this one. Um, so the AI company, let me see if I can get it up real, real quick. Yeah. So the AI company A group of major record labels is suing two AI startups alleging they wrongfully used popular artists work to train their systems to produce copyrighted music without their consent. The Record Industry Association of America, uh, the trade group on behalf of labels, including Sony Music Entertainment, UMG Recordings, and Warner Records, uh, filed two copyright infringement cases against AI companies Suno and Uncharted Labs, uh, the, de the developer behind Udio, for training their AI models with the label's unlicensed sound recordings. Uh, Udio is the company behind BBL Drizzy. Uh, the AI generated song that went viral last month during the Kendrick Lamar and Drake spat. Uh, Udio was founded last year by former Google DeepMind researchers to make it easy for anyone to create emotionally uh, resonant music in an instant. Uh, according to the company, in April, it raised $10 million in funding. Uh, meanwhile, Suno raised $125 million in funding last month. The platform, which allows users to create songs with only few prompts, relies on OpenAI's ChatGPT for lyrics and title development. Uh, Udo and Suno did not immediately respond to a request for a comment. Uh, IA CEO Mitch Glazier said in a statement that the lawsuits are necessary to reinforce the most basic rules of the road for the responsibilities and ethical and lawful development of generative AI systems and to bring, ooh, I don't know where that big old ad just jumped in the middle of the thing right there. Ooh. Ethical and lawful development of generative AI systems and to bring Suno and Udio's blatant infringement to an end. He added to the music company is already partnering and collaborating with responsible developers to build sustainable AI tools uh, that put artists and songwriters in charge, but unlicensed services can exploit an artist's work without consent or pay setback. 
In April, more than 200 artists, including Billie Eilish, Casey McGraves, J Balvin, Ja Rule, John Bond, Joe B, the Jonas Brothers, Katy Perry, Miranda Lambert, and more, said signed an open letter organized by the nonprofit artist uh, Rights Alliance called an calling on AI developers, technology and companies, platforms, and digital music services to cease the use of artificial intelligence to infringe upon and devalue the rights of human rights. Now, I, for one, actually agree upon that. I don't necessarily think AI should just have the rights to do whatever the fuck they want willy-nilly and Millie Vanilli, all these other artists. I just don't think that's necessarily a good idea. It just goes to show that Later on in the future, you can just use anyone's likeness. Um, if you remember, there was um, Black Mirror. There was an episode on Black Mirror where uh, I think it was uh, Selma Hayek. She was arguing with the producers like, hey, you guys are using my likeness. And well, that's in your contract. We can use whatever the fuck we want. So thus, I don't think AI necessarily should just have its way with society the way it has been. Uh, the lawsuit uh, against uh, UDO states, if developed with the permission and participation of copyright owners, generative AI tools will be able to assist humans in creating and producing new and innovative music. And it added, uh, but developed uh, irresponsibility without regard for fundamental copyright protections. Those same tools threatened enduring and irreparable harm to recording artists record labels, and the music industry, inevitably reducing the quality of new music available to consumers and diminishing our shared culture. Uh, meanwhile, the lawsuit against Suno states the company has over 10 million users, generating music files using the platform, bringing in about 2 million streams. So these digital music files have been released to the music, some already finding their way onto the major streaming services, and complete with the copyrighted sound recordings. They've been enabled their creation, uh, yet Suno sought no permission form uh, from and gives no credit or compensation to the human artists or other rights holders whose works fuel their creation. So basically they're just using everyone's shit without paying anybody. And to be petty, to be petty, Mr. Champagne Poppy took it upon himself to post an AI robot the same day that this lawsuit came out. <laughs> so, needless to say, somebody was paying attention or had something to do with that AI lawsuit of BBL Drizzy, don't you think? Petty Pendergrass strikes again.